A.L. Levy here with Nail the Mix URM Academy, and I am going to unbox Monstro City by Meshuga, which was produced and mixed by Tua Madsen, and this appeared in March 2017's Nail the Mix. So if you like what you see here, there's a link below, and you can grab it and mix this for yourself. So those of you who follow Meshuga know this, those of you who don't will be impressed, but this is actually a live recording, or as live as it gets for in the studio. So uh, not only is it a live recording, but there is a ton of stuff in here. Um, and let me just say that for a metal band to be able to record live and uh, sound this good is quite, quite the statement. Uh, only bands on the level of Meshuga, Opeth, Gojira as well, could, you know, they have to be that good to be able to pull this off. Um, this is not typical. Uh, it's definitely not the norm, and this session is insane. But uh, let me show you that. The blue right there, those are just drums. These are bass, the yellow, uh, guitars. Now, I think that they're just quadded rhythms, but uh, <laughs> lots of microphones. Um, and, and some cool stuff on the drums, like reamped drums and stuff. We'll get into that. All kinds of options on guitar. You do have the DIs as well, so you know you don't have to use everything. You don't actually have to use anything that we give you. Um, you know, some effects. And vocals. Now, I'll just let you hear what it sounds like now with no mix. Uh, and just so you see, the only thing on here right now are some gates on the toms and the snare. Just because it's a live recording, there's more bleed than, than usual. So I just wanted to control that a little bit. And uh, as you can see, though, this is pretty much as raw as it's going to get. Um, there are buses, but that's a good thing for the purposes of this unboxing. As you can see, uh, for instance, the FX are going to guitar lead. Um, vocals are going to vocal lead. Uh, guitars, rhythm guitars are going to guitar rhythm bus. Bass is going to the bass bus, etc. Rooms, cymbals, toms, snare kick, drums, and then instrumental and vocal, and then master. And this is, uh, normally with these unboxings, I will just do it uh, straight without any buses, but this is a huge session. Let me just hear you, let me just play you what it sounds like without, without messing with it. Sugar, you know how cool this is. Um, you know, let's get into it. I'm going to play these drums by themselves to get started, and then we'll get into what is even in here to begin with. That just feels so good. I'm muting these just so, because I want to eventually show you what the toms are like. Uh, absolutely raw 
And as you can hear, these are this is a very good drum recording. Uh, great, great drummer. Uh, very, very clear. Lots of detail. And your challenge is going to be to preserve that. Now, keep in mind, you do not have to use everything we gave you. In some cases, you don't have to use any of it, but you should. Let's see what we got here. Start with a kick. So it seems like we have a left kick and a right kick. And it goes left, right, left, right, left, right. Yeah, you can, you can see it right here. So for instance, right kick. Actually, I don't know if it's right or left because I don't know what he leads with, but kick one and kick two. And there's several mics. Uh, there's a 901, looks like a 602. I believe this has got to be an RE20. Um, and then the reamps. I'm not sure what this was reamped through. That's cool. There's all kinds of cool noises and just stuff in these reamps. So the RE20 sounds like the dominant kick here. We'll play them all together. Now, mind you, I just unsoloed everything and you can still hear the kick, which is kind of phenomenal for a natural kick in this style of music. Um, let's hear what we got snare-wise. Not much difference, just this gate, uh, this gate right here is getting rid of some of the bleed. That's, again, the reason we're doing that is just because there's so much here that uh, it's easier to go through the unboxing, that's all. I'm gonna add the symbols into that now. Got a lot to work with. And looks like we've got two hi-hats, overhead left, a second overhead left, and an overhead right. So I'm not sure what this layout is. It's probably um, middle left, far left, and right. Now let's check out what we've got Tom-wise. See, there, there's a lot of bleed, again. Um, a lot of mics, a lot of bleed, live recording. So these gates just help a little. Now again, you might be like, that doesn't sound like the tracks I'm used to hearing here. And uh, first of all, there's a million tracks here and I'm not mixing it. Um, second of all, the live recording aspect is a whole different ball game than the normal studio recordings that you'll get on Nail the Mix. This It's a whole different beast and things will sound different. If you listen to the mix on this record, it sounds different. Um, it's live. End of story. Let's hear what these room options are. Amp head. I don't know what that is. Some nice rooms. Road. You can probably get some good kick action out of that one. Heirloom mics, they, were, they sponsored us once. They make some great mics. So 
Sounds very, very distant. Get some cool room sound out of that. Distant. So these sounds right here, the reamps and stuff, I, I don't think they're meant to be super prominent or anything. Uh, I think they're just meant to add, you know, exactly what it says here. Amb, ambient, amb, amb, amb. I am sure that sounds, that stands for uh, ambient. So they're supposed to add ambience. Okay, so either ambience or ambient, but either way, uh, the instruction is basically written into the file. They're supposed to add ambience to the drums, and that's what they do. Uh, let you hear the drums with and without the rooms. Notice how lifeless it sounds when I mute the rooms? It's crazy, right? Like when you hear them on their own, you're like, I'm not sure I understand. And then you hear them uh, in and out of the drum mix. And it's like, oh, okay, I get it. That adds all that life and glue um, and just f feel. The sound makes it feel more like a, a drummer in the room playing hard. All right, let's check out the bass. Now, I, I have a feeling that, you know, we have got a bass DI, a distorted bass, bass pick, I'm not sure what that means, and a 441 microphone. So let's just listen to the basic bass, just the uh, DI. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Tight. I, I'm only turning the bass up for the purposes of this. Uh, and it sounds like I turned the distorted bass up and it sounded great. Let's hear it. So you have three distortion options here. The 441, the pick, and the distorted line. Uh, check it out. There are three different flavors of distorted bass. And obviously the clean one if you want it, but why would you want it by itself? I mean, you might make your own distorted tone out of it, but uh, you are getting a really good one from us, and why not go with what was really used? But hey, it's up to you if you decide to mix this. All right, now, these guitars, uh, I think that we've got quadded rhythms, because look, we've got Marshall 1, Marshall 2, Marshall 3, Marshall 4. Okay, so I think that these are, that these are quadded, and then going through multiple amps. So we've got a rectifier, an angle, uh, torp direct, I'm not too familiar with what those are, but uh, I'm sure it's cool. A C watt, and the then the DIs. And I remember the C watt was crazy sounding. Can you hear that? It sounds like a black hole. Well, that's what's cool about these guitars. You have all these different tone options that if you take your time and really blend this stuff together, 
uh, you could come up with a great, great guitar tone. And uh, that's what Tui does on his Nail the Mix, and that's what he did on this mix. Let's listen to the, the Torp Rum. So you can hear, uh, these, are not, these are not meant to be the main guitar sound but they still sound cool and you can still get something out of them. That's more a mainstay rhythm and angle. I know what that is. And then the wreck. And I'm not sure what kind of rectifier this is. Let's see what it says. Nope, it doesn't say. And of course, the Marshall. So you've got all these different textures uh you know normally when you're mixing something you'll get one or two microphones per amp uh right here you're getting <laughs> one two three four five six six amps per guitar four tracks of rhythms so if i did my math correctly that's 24 tracks of rhythm guitar that you got to kind of sum down to four um, in a way. So normally, like I said, you'll get one or two microphones per rhythm track. And, you know, it's kind of like you're presented the tone from the producer. But in this case, you're giving the tone ingredients. And uh, you, can, you can go any sort of which way. Uh, or you can take the DIs, which are right here, and make your own tone. But uh, I would encourage you to to work with what we gave you because we gave it to you for a reason it's what was on the actual album so let's just listen to guitars drums and bass real quick <laughs> so much scrolling see it's crazy like when i play you the guitars soloed all those different mics are like the weird drum rooms it's like really what's going on here this this sounds insane but then you hear it all together and it's just like god this band is awesome hats off to Tua madsen on his incredible production and i mean he's a, just a legend but still All right, let's see what else we got here. Lead guitar. And then the lead guitar, FX1 and FX2. Not sure what that means, we'll find out. Ah, okay, you've got stereo leads here that are harmonized and looks like effects are printed. So, hence why well, it says FX1 and 2. Pretty cool. Droney. Let's see what this is. Tui Montrosity Lead ADA. Um, and then ADA effects. <laughs> Classic Meshuga solo. Yeah. 
Try playing that. God, this band's so cool. What is this? Four part harmonies on the guitars with the uh, stereo effects and very cool dissonant harmonies. What's this last one? Let's see. Okay. Let's see. That's a hint that you need to fade this out right there. Okay. Let's check out the vocals. This looks like we got a vocal. And I'm not sure if this is a different vocal or a double I really don't know I, I, I don't know if it's like a different microphone or if the vocals were done non non live style why oh skyline right in shimmering right yes Duh. One of the most iconic voices in metal, for sure. Relishing the idea of that. And so, yeah, you've got doubled and tripled voice. And I, I applaud that decision, even on this, which, you know, is live-ish. Like, uh, this was the right move. Um, it sounds great. And you got to make it work. All right, there you have it. Not uh, a million different tracks, like some sessions that I've unboxed, but a million options and not too many correct options. So you need to really take your time and hunt for the right blend of everything. This mix is about the blends. And again, as you can see, there's a ton of tracks, ton of microphones, drum reamps. It's a live recording. Uh, but it's not an incredibly complex arrangement. So, you know, drums, bass, guitar, some lead guitar, and some vocals. And that, that's it. There you go. So uh, the complexity is not going to be in, like, trying to fit in an orchestra and programming in rhythm guitar and lead guitar, more lead guitar, clean guitar, vocals, uh, harmony vocals, scream vocals, drums and fake drums all going at the same time. Like, this is more the standard rock and roll metal band arrangement just done in a very unique way so this is al levy this has been an unboxing for march 2017's nail the mix with meshuga monstrosity and this was originally produced and mixed by tua madsen who uh i love that sound by the way by tua madsen who did march 2017 nail the mix if you like this check the link below and happy mixing